Good morning, church. Can I just um, invite us to kindly stand if you would like? We want to spend just some next few 10 minutes or so to seek the Lord, right? To prepare our hearts for the day, to invite Him in our midst. Because not only today is a gathering of, of you know, the church uh, coming together to worship, but I believe that the Lord has. A word for each and every one of us. I believe the Lord wants us to encounter Him in a new and special way, even this morning. Right? So let's open our hearts, you know, to, to welcome Him, to receive Him. Let me open us with a word of prayer and then I'll pass the time to the worship team to lead us, you know, in a simple song of worship as we welcome the Holy Spirit, as we welcome our Lord in our midst. Yes, God, we invite you this morning, Lord, to come. To come, Lord. And fill our hearts with your presence, God. Your assuring presence that you are with us in our midst. That you are enthroned, Father God, in our praises, Lord. That you are here with us this morning, Lord. So we look to you, God, this day. We look to you, Lord God. So come and fill our hearts with praises for you, Lord. Fill our hearts with adoration for you, Lord God. If there's any unsettling things in our hearts and our minds, God, Lord, we surrender it before you, God. Come and take control in our lives, in our church, in our families, Lord. We welcome you, Lord, this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are welcome. More than welcome. Let's sing it together. To abide in this temple, to reside in this place, you are welcome, more than welcome. Sing Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come and fill this place. You are welcome. Sing that again. You are welcome. More than welcome to abide in this temple, to reside in this place. You are welcome. Come, Holy Spirit. More than welcome. Holy Spirit, come and fill this place. We are gathering together. Worship at your throne to exalt the name of Jesus, to worship him alone. He is worthy of our praises, so we lift our voices high. Spirit, come, fill this Spirit, come. Yeah. 
Let's just lift our voices to the Lord and say, Yes, God, we want you, Lord. Yes, God, come in our midst, Lord. Come be enthroned, God, in our midst, God. Come be enthroned, Father God, in every household, in every family, in every heart, Lord God. Yes, God. Let's continue in our own way just to sing our praises to Him, our prayer praises to Him, to enthrone Him wherever you are, if you are at home this morning, just bring alongside your family members and just seek the Lord together to cast aside all your burdens and to lift it to Him for He is here to minister He is here in our midst Yes God, how you delight the Lord in our praises How you delight Father God in our adoration Lord God How you delight Father God to dwell in our midst, Lord. Not only today, Father God, but in our lives, Lord God. How you delight, Father God, in your children, Lord, singing praises back to you, Lord. In your children, Father God, adoring you, Lord God. So we come before you this morning as your children, saying, Abba, Father, we truly want to worship you today. Yes, Lord. We truly want to rest in your presence and in our identity as your children, God. Knowing, God, that we are loved by you, Lord. And pouring, God, our love for you, God, back unto you, Lord, God. And I believe that the Lord wants us to come even this morning with a heart of expectation. To expect to encounter Him, to expect to hear from Him this morning. No, it's not just another Sunday after Sunday, but it is a day where we will encounter the Lord. Amen. 
It's the day that we will hear from Him, Amen. And it's in this fellowship of the saints, it's in this fellowship of the church, and that together we can encounter and experience His goodness and His faithfulness in our lives and in our church. We sing the first verse, and you are welcome. You are welcome. Let's sing that again. More than welcome. Just welcome the Lord in our midst, in our homes. To abide in this temple. To reside. Just desire Him. This place. To hunger you for are Him. Welcome. More than welcome. Sky. Holy Spirit, come and fill this place. You are welcome. You are welcome. It's got to reside. reside in this place. You are welcome, more than welcome. Holy Spirit, come and fill this place. We are gathering together. Let's lift our voices to Him. To worship we're here to worship you, Lord. Call the name of Jesus. To lift you high. To worship him alone. Worthy of our praises. So we lift our voices high. Spirit, come. Fill us. We are gathering. We are gathering together. To worship at your throne, to exalt the name of Jesus, to worship him alone. He is worthy of our praises, so we lift our voices up, Spirit come. Feel this, Spirit come. Spirit come. Spirit come. Again, Spirit come, Spirit come, fill this. This one last time we sing, Spirit come, Spirit come, fill this place, fill this place. Yes, God, come and be enthroned, Lord, in our midst today. and in our praises and in our offerings unto you Lord God we commit this morning unto you we thank you Lord in Jesus name I pray Amen Amen, amen. Thank you Jesus Thank you Lord Good morning church Welcome to service so glad that we all can gather here again every week. You know, it's amazing that uh, we are all recipients of God's love and grace and mercy. Because Christ has died and He set us free. And that's the promise that every one of us inherit. Amen. So let's just sing this song. Let's just, it's a song of... Uh, proclamation, but it's also a song of truth to our hearts. Okay. Hallelujah, Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now was blind but now I see yes Lord thank you Lord thank you for your grace let's sing the first two together it was grace that 
celebrate Jesus and His amazing grace, His amazing love for us. Hallelujah, Lord. Not only has He set us free, but He's called us His friend. What a privilege, what an honor it is for us to be called friend of God. Amen. Amen. Let's just sing the song in celebration of who we are, sons and daughters of God. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Come on, church. Let's clap our hands together. How you
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's such a great inheritance. Thank you, Lord.
chains are gone, we have been set free because of your love for us Lord, because of your love for us and this morning before we partake of the communion, I want to read to us from Romans 5 verse 6 it says, for while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly for one will scarcely die for a righteous person Though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God chose, uh, shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by His blood, much more shall we be saved by Him from the wrath of God. For if while we were still enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by His life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This morning, I just want to invite us just to reflect even upon the, the words we've read and the words that we've sung as well, right? that we have been set free. We have been set free from our sins, from the bondage of sin, from our shame, from our guilt. And I believe this morning the Lord is inviting us really to, to embrace His grace, to embrace His grace that no longer we need to be living in guilt or in the bondage of our sins. No, He has set us free from all those so we can live freely in His, in His freedom. Amen? Amen. Amen. So even before we, we partake of the communion, just spend the next few moments just to thank the Lord in your own way. Thank the Lord for His grace that all the bondages that we have are now broken. We are free in Him. And we can embrace the grace He has freely given unto us. Koshana 
1 Corinthians 11, 24, it says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. Verse 25, it says, In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's partake of the cup together. Yes, God, this morning, Lord, we truly, Lord, want to thank you, Lord, for your grace for us, your love for us, God, that set us free from our bondages, our shame, our guilt, our sin, Lord. And this morning, we can stand here saying that we are free, God, because of you and because of the cross. And as we're going to sing the song, My Chains Are Gone, once again, let's just really thank the Lord and, be, be, and pour out your gratitude to him for what he has done for us on the cross. My chains are gone I've been set free yes, God. My God, my Savior Has ransomed me And like a flood His mercy reigns And love Amazing Let's sing again My chains are gone Chains are gone. Ooh, I've been set free. We are free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like the Lord's mercy reigns. Unending One last time we sing. Chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace, unending love. God, we thank you, Lord, for your love, Lord, for us, God, for your grace, God, for us. And even through your death, Lord, and after that, you resurrected and you are alive, God. And this morning, we want to remember that we serve a living God, the one who not only died on the cross for us, but one who is alive and is interceding for us. And this morning, I'm going to spend the next few moments just to lift, you know, our petitions unto the Lord. Whether you're in need of a healing in your life, I just want you to raise your hands to the Lord. Whether you're in need of a breakthrough, a financial break, breakthrough, a career breakthrough, 
or family issues, family breakthrough, let's just surrender it before the Lord. Whether you want to stand in proxy for someone, you know, for healing, or for prayer, I just want you to also raise your hands unto the Lord. We want to spend the next few moments just to intercede, you know, for we serve a living God, amen. Hallelujah. We serve a God who loves us, who is alive, and who is interceding for us. Yes. Yes, God, you see every need, Lord. You see every hand lifted, whether here in the sanctuary or at home, Father God. You're a God, Lord, that's able to heal. Your God, God, that's able to restore. Your God, Lord, that's able to bring breakthrough in our lives, Lord. Your God, God is able to fill our hearts even with peace, Lord, beyond our own understanding, even today, right now. God, we pray, God, that you intervene, Lord. Intervene, Lord, God in each and every individual, in their lives, in their families, in their situations, Lord. You are here with us, God. You are for us, Lord. And we look to you, God. For all those of us, God, who have been so burdened, God, and so overwhelmed by these issues that we have, Lord. We surrender it before you, God. We surrender it before you, God. That's not us bearing it alone, God. You are bearing it together with us, Lord. For you care for us, Lord. You care for each and every one of us here that's lifted our hands before you. And even those who have not, but you know in their hearts, their needs, Lord. You care for each and every one. And you're able to bring a breakthrough in our lives. This morning, we also want to pray for the church family, for our church family, for who have lost their loved ones recently. And also including the families of our retired pastors, you know, Pastor Ronnie Ip and Pastor Eddie Tan, who have both also went home to be with the Lord this week. And also the other families who have lost loved ones. Let's just lift them up before the Lord. Let's pray that His comfort will be so evident and so real in these families. Yes, God, we look to you this morning, Lord. You know, Lord, each and every family who have lost loved ones recently, Lord. You see their pain, you know their pain, you know their grief, Lord God. God, we just pray that your comfort will be with them. That you will strengthen them, Lord God. Even as they remember and celebrate you know, the lives of their dear loved ones, Lord. We just pray that your comfort, Lord, will strengthen them you know, all the days of their lives, Lord God. And your presence will be so real, so real, Father God, to them, Lord. We just want to lift them up before you, Lord. That you will comfort them. You will assure them, Father God, with your presence. That you are with them, Father God, in this, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Then continue in the mode of prayer. Right, this morning, I want to pray also for the Malaysian church. And reading from the passage in John 14, verse 16 to 17, it says, And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Let's pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit as our counselor, advocate, and comforter. We pray for the Malaysian church as on site services and life group activities resume in varying stages. Cause her to continually seek the Holy Spirit's guidance in responding rightly to those who are still grappling with the physical and emotional toll of the COVID-19 crisis. 
draw both church leaders and members to the place of seeking the continual infilling of the Holy Spirit to bear His fruit in their daily lives. May they allow Him to work powerfully in them and through them in these challenging times. Convict Christians of the need to correctly discern His voice through daily spiritual disciplines, holy living, and the proper interpretation of your word. Father, may the Malaysian church be empowered by the Holy Spirit to reach out to the lost and to live and work for your glory. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give a hand to the worship team for the beautiful time of worship. And kindly be seated as well. Right, right now, we want to watch together you know, a video. You know, for the last few weeks, we've been playing different videos, different stories you know, from our church, of the testimonies of what God has been doing in, in different ministries and in different lives. And this morning, we have a story you know, of a young woman where she's going to share how she has caught, uh, been caught to serve in the marketplace. You now, how in the marketplace, she's learned to even tune in with the Lord. And it's a story that shows us how our trust in the Lord, you know, will never fail and that He also never fails to direct our paths. So let's watch the story together and allow, allow also the Lord, you know, to speak to you as you watch the testimony. Hello, I'm Li Fang. I'm working as a clinical dietitian in Salaya Hospital, and I'm currently actually into 10 years of my service under Ministry of Health. So in order to work as a clinical dietitian, basically you definitely have to study degree for four years, which is in the dietetics. So actually I pursued that in University of Kumasam Malaysia, UKM. So dietetics is basically my last option, out of my eight option. Somehow, I don't know, by God, Will, <laughs> my God's will, I got, sort of got um, didactics as my option to study in UK at the time. And when I actually first started my degree, I still remember my first semester that night, or even like from the day of orientation itself, I cried in the hostel. Why? Because when I looked through the module, the day that I received my module, I just realized that actually didactic actually we. There's so many things that you have to cover. So like that really threw me off. Like, am I really going to do this at that time? And somehow that time, uh, also it's the same time that actually I started joining FGA. So somehow, you know, you know by God grace that uh, there's a good senior from FGA actually who brought us in van, you know, to drive us to church every Sunday. But things started to change actually, especially in my final year. From It was from that moment onwards that I feel that Maybe there's a certain purpose for me that God put me in this pathway to begin with. I realized that from my final year, to really see the direction or the pathway from that moment onwards, actually is really like whenever you I think about patient, it's really like there's something else that God wants to stir in my heart. So it was actually from that moment onwards, you know, uh, I sort of like performing better academically and also like as a as a clinical dietitian. And even when I graduated actually at that time, I sort of like a, in a very deep dilemma for quite some time actually. I think it took me almost like one year on what as that pathway. So somehow that I think that God really like a, already hinting because what happened is during my final clinical attachment and that time it's actually Salaya Hospital, okay? Somehow like the boss came and spoke to me, the boss in hospital Salaya came. And that time I say, Li Fang, actually I'm looking because I'm I don't have enough permanent dietitian. And I was looking into contract dietitian. Now I would like to invite you, you know, you would like to apply if you're unsure where you're gonna go after this, after your graduation. Would you like to consider, you know, gain some clinical experience while waiting for your permanent job? And actually at the same time, the Singapore General Hospital, usually they will send representative and come and to our university and conduct interview. And they actually, the person from the Singapore General Hospital kind of like uh, told me that, you know, you're a very good candidate and we would love to have you to join us in our institution in Singapore. And that's why actually I was wondering, you know, should I just stay in Malaysia to work as dietitian or should I just go to Singapore? The turning point for me 
when I'm stuck is actually when someone actually offered me to go for a mission camp. It was during that camp actually, for the first time I feel that I really have a committed and dedicated time with God. And it was during that camp actually, frankly speaking, that you know God showed me the vision and God sent someone to spoke to me during that prayer that you know, and it was the person who actually prayed for me, who enlightened me, who tell me, define you might be where God wants you to be right now. And I think that's where elevation itself is it sort of lifted some stone or some burden in my heart, you know. And it was from that moment onward I find peace that maybe I'm already walking the pathway that God wants me to walk. After that camp, this is where actually I feel like, you know, yeah, this is where I'm going to go. And actually when you hit that realisation, right, things really immediately change when I actually go back to work. Oh, uh, there's a one special evening. I was still in the ward when it's late, 4.30, that kind of thing. God was telling me, I, and I know it's definitely from God, because what, why? Because 4.30, there's some thought in my mind, Lifa, go to the ward and smile to the patient. And it's definitely not from me because 4.30, 430 you're ready to go down, go back. You're not going to stay in the ward anymore. So I'm like, okay, then just do it. I just go to work and I was like, hi auntie, hi uncle, how are you? Have you have an afternoon tea? And then, you know, are you getting your dinner soon? Okay, are you looking forward to your dinner, that kind of thing? And of course, while well, you just a normal conversation and you just smile to them and that's it. And that time I don't feel anything, okay, just do lah. And then just go one round my ward and I just go down, go back. And I think I just do it for two or three days. So it was actually from there, some things began to, you know, you begin to see the fruits because like one of the patients actually called me out in the clinic who was at the waiting area so I was walking towards my clinic room and then like uh, the patient was me still I was like waving to me I was like wondering who's that patient you know and I still remember when he was waving and just say hi that kind of thing and I go back to my office because I need to set up my clinic so the patient was talking very loudly in Chinese <laughs> to the patient's the, the next patient's name oh that's a doctor very good you know, he was like, I was so depressed, you know, in the world at that time to tell me, you know, my, my condition is not doing so good, you know, I need to go, go for extra surgery. And then he came and smiled at me, asked about my, uh, you know, asked about my day. You know? I was so happy that time. And then he was like, telling the patient so loud that I can hear from my room. And then I was like, okay. I didn't realize, you know, the few days that actually I went around in the ward, it actually touched some of my patient. I didn't realize until a few, a few weeks later, the patient actually shared it with another patient. And it's just quite concerned. I heard that thing was like, whoa. I was like, okay, I want to do more. So this is actually the feeling of wanting to do more in where I work. After a few years I working, actually, I went into doing my master's. So I actually do my master's in kidney nutrition and I got it. Wherever I go right now, frankly speaking, at the end of the day, I feel that the most uh, rewardful or I will lose the most uh, things that actually that keep me going right now and I feel like this is the right way is actually like God actually has been sending a lot of opportunity a lot of people to, into my life at the moment and telling me you know Lifang you're doing a good job you know there's a lot of opportunities that open to me to continue to improve myself in this same field so I feel like yeah there's, there's a lot of things that God actually has built up you just have to walk and just faithfully just obey whatever God put me where you think, uh, the way that I'm working right now from my journey, there's some things that I've learned that you might want to think about. So I think the first question that you want to ask yourself is actually, is there something that actually stir in your heart? Because those can be some small hints that God was trying to knock at the door and you know, to come out of your comfort zone. And of course, the second question you're going to ask is actually, how are you going to listen to God's calling? Because frankly speaking, there's a lot of needs that we want. If I yearn for financial needs, I would have gone to Singapore. What do you really want? My second question is what do you really, really want? That at the end of the day, does your want fulfill God's calling? Amen. Thank you, Li Fang, for sharing your story with us. And also, she has poses two questions, right? Now, what is God stirring in your heart? And perhaps there's a calling that you have to answer also from the Lord. So are we, are we listening out to what He's asking us to do? Right? Something for us to take back and to, and to reflect. But I also want to encourage us, you know, if this video speaks to you and believe that it has, right? Share it out 
you know, to those whom you think that God also wants to speak to regarding calling, regarding next steps, or to encourage someone. So the, the videos will be out you know, in our social media on Wednesdays, I believe every Wednesdays. It'll be out on our Instagrams, our Facebook, and, and uh, WhatsApp as well. So take it, take the link, you know, share with someone and encourage someone. Right? You never know, you know who, whom God might be using through you right, to speak to those people. So share the links when they're out on Wednesdays. And right now we'll come to the time to uh, give our offering unto the Lord. Right, so there are a few methods to give, as is seen on the screen, even for those online as well. We can bank into our Maybank account, the church account, or also checks can also be written you know, to Full Gospel Assembly per heart. If you are more tech savvy, you like to use your phone, like to scan codes, right? You can also scan uh, the QR code. Even right now, we give you all some time as well. You can scan the QR code that's connected to various banks in, in our country and also to give, it, uh, to give the offering unto the Lord. Let's pray for the offering. Yes, God, we thank you, Lord, for your provision over our lives, God. Indeed, you are a good God, your faithful provider, faithful father. And this morning, even, even as we give unto you, Lord God, God, we just pray that you will use what we give, Lord, for the extension of your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And before we go into a time of uh, hearing the word of God through our sermon, there's a few announcements that I'd like to share. Right, the first is the Plaza Prima um, will be open. There'll be a, a passageway that'll be open uh, after the church between 11 o'clock to 12 p.m. So if you're heading towards the Oak Clang Road or Jalan Puchong, you can use this exit via Plaza Prima to avoid the traffic congestion you know, outside of our church area. And the second announcement I want to make is that prayer service will be back physical you know, at the end of every Wednesday of the month. So the last Wednesday of every month, prayer meetings will be physical in church, but Zoom sessions will also continue. So it will run concurrently. So for example, when we meet physically on 29 June, right, if you're unable to attend physically, you can also opt to attend online as well. So the same uh, Zoom link that we've been using will still be the same for us to use for the physical service and online service. So do join us uh, to come together to, to worship the Lord, to pray, to intercede, to get us a church physically, right? But if you're unable to, uh, for, for, for reasons, right, join us online as well. Join us via Zoom. Right? So we're looking forward to see you physically in person, right, to worship together, to seek the Lord, to intercede together. You know, every last Wednesday of the month here in the main century, Right, from 8.30 onwards. And this morning, before, before we come to this business speaker, we also want to invite and welcome those who are here for the first time. Right, if you're here for the first time, whether uh, physically or online, can you just give a show of hands, just wave your hands. We'd like to welcome you, whether you're up there or, or down here. Yep, there's someone there. Let's give them a warm, warm welcome. You know, do get to know them even after the service as well. And if you're online as well, if you're new, Right, do, do indicate as well. And even for um, new members or, or old members, right, if you're not part of a life group, I do encourage us to be part of a life group, to be part of the church community. Right? So if you're looking to join for a, a life group, looking to join a small group, do scan the QR code that's on the link right, and we will connect with you to a life group. Um, and also as well, if you're online, right, if you want to get updates from us to even catch our videos, our, our uh, different snippets, media snippets that's up online, click the subscribe button. Right? It's there that you can get uh, regular updates of whatever content that we have online. And right now, we've come to the time where we want to hear you know, from the word of the Lord. And before I introduce the speaker, I want to invite Elder Saul, who will come and introduce the speaker. Let's invite Elder Saul. Very good morning to all of you. Indeed, it is great to see all of you back in church. Uh, it is my privilege and pleasure this morning to introduce our speaker for the day. Um, D, uh, Ding Jian, or more affectionately known uh, by us as DJ. All right, You can call him DJ. He, he, he responds well to the word DJ. He's a Malacca boy. All right? He grew up in Malacca, did his primary and secondary education in Malacca, and when he did his SPM, all right, he did it so well, Petronas gave him a scholarship 
to do the, the IB, the International Baccalaureate at Mara College in Banting. All right? Very rare. Do you ever find uh, people uh, getting a scholarship to study in Mara who, who are not Malays? Now, he did so well in his IB that he qualified the, to go to Cambridge University, UK, right, to do mechanical engineering. So he was there four years, and during that four years, lo and behold, he met a member of our congregation and got married to her, came back, and started attending FGA in the year 2010. And because uh, he had the scholarship from Petronas, he continued to serve with Petronas, and he has been with Petronas ever since, right, for the last 12 years. Currently, he holds the position of the exec executive assistant to the senior vice president of Petronas. So anything you want to know about ONG in Malaysia, you can ask him. Uh, in terms of uh, the service in this church, uh, DJ and his wife Shirley, uh, has, has been a very remarkable couple here. They started uh, attending uh, young adults CG. They were actually in charge of it. From, from Pulse, the, the CG known as Pulse, they multiplied, became Pulse and uh, Lighthouse. And from Lighthouse, they multiplied to become a Anchor as well. And, all this, and part of this time, DJ was even working in Miri. And he would come back every two weeks to attend Home Village uh, CG and to see his family. And yet, the CG grew. Remarkable work that has been done. Currently, he serves in the core team that manages young adults. And as, at the same time, he is also in the word team and in the current uh, ad hoc church planning team, whereby they, we plan for all the meetings every Sunday. You know the speakers that you hear every Sunday? Uh, these are the product of the planning from people like him. He speaks regularly with, with the young adults and in their workshops as well. So without further ado, church, let's welcome DJ. Test, test. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Can still come here. Good morning, church. All right. Okay. Let me just set up my laptop. Hopefully, it works. Although I'm quite young, but uh, we still have problems sometimes. All right. Does it come out? Hello, hello. Nope. Okay. Hello, hello. Okay. It should come out. Yep. Oh, yeah, I forgot to take out my mask. I guess I'm too particular. All right, uh, yeah. It's good to be back in church. Um, oh, before that, before that, for those of you who are online, where's the camera for online? I, I sometimes do. There, all right, welcome. Uh, welcome to service online as well. Uh, and I do hope that you make your way to church. Uh, I'm guilty of it, actually. I only came to church maybe a month or two ago. Um, obviously, hearing Elder Ho and Elder Sauce uh, uh, encouragement to come to church, uh, a bit careful that like you see my mask just now, I still uh, have it on. So please come to church. Um, um, I have to tell you that it really makes a difference worshipping amidst the believers compared to at home. Although you wake up early, you prepare, and you tune in and on time, it, it, it's just different. So please, those who are online, please come back to church. And talking about online, I, I was also made to understand that there are a few friends and family tuning in from New Zealand as well. I just want to say hi and thank you for tuning in and your support. Okay, enough about me, all right? Now, the Joshua series. I think we've come to a landing in the book of Joshua. Next week, uh, we will hear the conclusion, uh, wrapping up of Joshua. So this week, we will just do a short character study, all right, uh, of the, the, this successor of Moses, the conqueror of the promised land. But instead of doing a character, character study, um, I'd like to dive slightly deeper, just slightly, uh, in terms of what makes the Joshua of the Bible, the man who he is. And thus, you, the title that I was trying to coin, which is the Joshua behind the Joshua. I hope it wasn't too cryptic. I did ask uh, a couple of feedback from uh, my peers whether, you know, am I being too cryptic? But I think some people say I like cryptic. Uh, so that's good. Hopefully that's good. Uh, all right. Uh, but before that, I want to share that 
the thought of delivering this message has actually been very nerve-wracking for me. Uh, and the, I'm really thankful that I did the character of Joshua because the words of Joshua really, really spoke. Okay, let me illustrate that. And hopefully the next slide appears. Yeah, all right, okay. Let's read it. Uh, Book of Joshua, chapter 1, uh, starting from verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I'll give you every place where you set your foot on, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the, desert to the Lab, to, from the desert to Lebanon and from the Great River, the Euphrates, all the heated country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. You imagine for a young adult, stressing it out, you know, being nervous, reading this passage, right? I can tell you it's really, really reassuring. And I was just telling Esther just now that it's a bit weird that I'm not ner as nervous as I used to be uh, chairing uh, before the pandemic. So I would like to advise the next time any one of us needs to do something nerve-wracking, just open to the book of Joshua, read the first few verses. I hope it helps you guys. Okay, for today's message, I'm going to try a couple of new things, all right? Um, being young, so I, I, I am a bit, I'm trying to be bold and courageous as well. So there'll be times where I would need every one of us uh, that has a smartphone to take your smartphone out, scan a QR code, and answer one or two questions. Very simple questions, no tricks, uh, just questions. Uh, there might be some technical hiccups. Uh, I hope not, but there might be, so do bear with me. All right? And I would also do a couple of reflection questions, um, and we take time to reflect. Um, in the busyness of our lives, distractions of our phones and children, um, this and that, I do know that it's going to be difficult, but I do really hope that we try our best to do to take a minute or two when the reflection question comes, all right? Okay, let us pray before we dive in. Father God, we commit today's service into your hands. We pray that for each one of us here and also those who are online will hear from you specifically and take away from today's message not only something for the mind, but for the heart, stepping out in faith in the various capacities and the areas that they are in, trusting that you are with each and every one of us. May we rise up as the Joshua in the Bible did for your glory alone, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we ask and we pray. Amen. Okay, let me start by asking my first question. And I need you guys to perhaps just put your phone away and just reflect on this. And the first question is this. How real is God in your life? It's a very simple question, but I suppose... So it's going to be quite difficult. So I'm just going to be quiet for about half a minute and just reflect how has God been, how real is He in your life? Okay, hold on to that reflection. Uh, we will come back to it uh, in a bit later. But now, allow me to bring you on a short tour on how real is God in Joshua's life in the Bible. We're all pretty familiar with the, ex the great exploits that Joshua had during his lifetime. So, in the interest of wanting it to be a responsive congregation, um, I, I'm going to get you guys to respond to me. What are the, first, uh, what are the few achievements that Joshua had? Uh, in his life. And those who are online, please type in the chat box. I will check after this, all right? So yeah, those who are laughing, please. <laughs> and what, uh, this is FGA, right? Yeah, I've been here for more than, what, 12 years? I bet you guys know what the achievements are, right? 
What? What about Jericho? What? Okay. Wall came down in Jericho. Thank you, Esther. What else? Elders are very quiet, uh, giving the chance to the members to speak. No? I was thinking, I was praying whether this would work. Clearly, it's not working as I hope to. Um, any, another one? Sorry? Crossing the river. Do we know which river? Jordan. Jordan, thank you. Any more? Any? Yes, please, Anthi. The sun stood still. All right, that's God's doing, yes. All right, so these are a few things that we see uh, found in uh, the book of Joshua. So I just, I just got some, obviously it's not all. Uh, I didn't have the, the, the sun stood still here. So these are some of the things that um, uh, Joshua did that came to mind. Uh, and I think one thing that I didn't put here was the settling down of Israelites in the promised land. I think that would be a great, great achievement. Sometimes I do, I do miss it. But I think if we were to think that as Joshua, if I were to settle down 2 million people in the promised land, people who have been nomads for 40 years, it's going to be quite a challenge. And he did it, right? So that's another achievement, I think. So having known his great exploits, what can we say about his character that brings about this achievement? That's where I'm coming from. All right, and to do this, again, something different. Uh, just help me out here if you can take your phone out, and I'm going to give you a QR code that you can scan, which is there. Uh, if you could scan the QR code, it will bring you to a page where you can type in your, the characters of Joshua that comes to your mind. All right, and I'll show you the, the, the interface later where you can see your responses. So do, do, do uh, scan the QR code and go for it. Those who do not, uh, can't, can't, can't scan or do not know how, uh, just nudge your neighbor. This is the time to help me, la. please, bro, help me. La. Okay? All right, uh, let me just go. Uh, don't worry, the, the QR code is going to come back. If I get this right, uh, yeah, all right. Yes, that's where that. Yeah, so this is the responses from you guys, 60 of you, or 73 now. Very good, climbing up. And this is what you guys are typing in. You can type more, you can type submit, and then you can come back again and uh, put it in more characters. All right, wow. Okay, I see a lot of courage, 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 just faith. Uh, yes, thank you. Wow, 170, nice. Okay, this, this works. I was, also called, I was also worried whether this would work. Okay, this works. Okay. Uh, so, let's see. Okay. So obedient, wow, fantastic. Obedient, courageous, bold. Uh, what else? Leadership, strong, uh, great leader. What else? Okay, faithful, yes, faithful. All right, great. That, that, that's the character that we see, right, in Joshua. So these are a couple of characters that we see in Joshua. And the question that I had when I was preparing this message was, um, how can I be like the Joshua of the Bible? What do I need to do? How can I develop these attributes that, the church is typing into. So that, that, that's where I came from, and, and being a typical <laughs> young adult Christian, guess what I did? Any, any thoughts what I did? No? Google, all right. <laughs> what else? No? Uh, okay, Google. Google is the like, single source of truth now. <laughs> no. All right, so what I did was, yes, equivalent to Google, I went to biblegateway.com, and I typed Joshua, and I clicked enter. And lo and behold, literally everywhere the word of Joshua is mentioned, it's there, right? They can find. And I was playing with it, and I was reading it up, and if I could go back to my previous one, I know you guys like the interface, but too bad, after this you can see it again. Uh, yeah, as I was reading the scriptures, it struck me that, you know, what is, how, how does Joshua become the man who he is? And... Uh, I noticed that the preparation he has gone through to become who he is before he succeeded Moses was amazing. And allow me to share three portions of scripture to learn about Joshua's formative years. So we'll read the passage and I'll draw a couple of insights to it uh, that I, I took from it. Um, and, and, and I hope that uh, when, when we read the passage together, uh, if you can please join me, um, I, I do believe that the word of God is uh, alive. So I want to read it instead of saying, okay, refer to the book of Numbers 1, 2, 5, and we, we move on. No, I, I, I want to make it a point to read it together as a church. All right? 
So, uh, first of all, we'll go to the book of Numbers, chapter 11. I do have the slides here, I hope. Yeah, all right, the book of uh, Numbers, chapter 11. And a bit of context before we read. Um, the Israelites are in the wilderness, uh, complaining about their hardships, needing to eat mana every day uh, until they're jala, you know, they don't want to eat anymore. And they're craving for meat. And that's the context, I said. And they say that if only we had meat to eat. And with that context, the passage reads, the Lord answered Moses, Is the Lord's arm too short? Now you will see whether or not what I'll say will come, uh, will come true for you. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him. And he took some of the power of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. When the Spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but did not do so again. However, two men whose names were Eldad and Medad had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all of the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Um, so here we see that Joshua has been Moses' aid since youth, right? Seeing Moses, how Moses and the Lord commune, and thus, the reality of God right in front of his eyes, right? And we see that he was close to Moses, even to the extent of being jealous when other people are able to prophesy, believing that, perhaps, believing that only Moses uh, can be the instrument for the Lord. So Moses, however being Moses, knows his place, right? He knows his place. He disciplined Joshua and said that he wished that all of the Lord's people would prophesy and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. So we see here that Joshua is also being disciplined as and when required. So I feel, comforted, I feel comforted that the Joshua of the Bible is, you know, human after all, right? And we see, so the first point for, for, for the preparation of our formative years of Joshua is we need to remember that it takes time in preparation, right? And it involves discipline as well. So he, he didn't become the Joshua across uh, Jordan just overnight. It takes time. And he's been Moses' aide since youth, right? So that's the first point. And our second one that I had, I found is in uh, Exodus chapter 33. If it works, yep. So let's read together Moses, um, uh, Exodus chapter 33, Moses. And now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp, some distance away. Yes, do join me, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of the meeting outside the camp. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrances to their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they all stood and worshipped, each at the entrance of their tent. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. So I think for me, just, just, just pause a while and imagine we are Joshua, right? We don't leave the tent of meeting. Our taiko, or Moses, left. And we don't leave the tent of meeting. And while, while Moses is there as well, the pillar of cloud came down and Moses and the Lord spoke face to face. Um, and the rest worshipping, right? Witnessing the Lord's presence consistently, day in, day at night, what would that make of us? Just, just, just reflect on that reality for a while. What would that make of us? And maybe, you know, maybe some of us say, ayah, last time different, ma. You know, last time I can see a pillar of cloud enter. Eh. But really, is that really that different? The Bible says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives inside us. How, how, how great is that? And how much more real can that be for us? 
So I'm just going to pause there for a couple of seconds and let that reality sink in, how Joshua experienced God and how real God is in our lives at this current present moment. All right? So the second thing that we see is a consistency in communing with God, spending time with God, be it in prayer, in the Word, um, with the family of believers here, coming together as a family of believers in church. That helps us prepare to be the Joshua of the Bible. So that's the second point. And on top of following Moses, Moses as his aid, we see that Joshua is not a passive aid where, you know, he just stands outside and wait for Moses. Okay, settle already. Okay, you go home. I see you stand there. So he's not a passive aid. And we see in Exodus chapter 17. Exodus 17, the Israelites were defending themselves against the Amalekites who attacked them in Rephidim. And this is what happened. At that time, Moses said to Joshua, Moses said to Joshua, yeah, Choose, uh, where's the, together, together. Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow, I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and her went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and sat, he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hand up, on one, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So, so Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. So we see another preparation season of Joshua's life where he fought, he literally fought the Amalekites. He doesn't just stand beside Moses and say, wow, Moses, your hand up already, huh? everybody okay huh? down there? No, he's down there fighting, right? So that, that, that stood out to me. We see from the text that he went to the battle. And we see also that there are, oh, oh, okay, yeah, here. We see also that there are ups and downs, right? He's not always winning. He's also losing and, and in the end, obviously, he wins. So thirdly, I, need, I, I drew from this text as we would need to work out our faith in action, not just stand by the sidelines, right? We need to work out our faith, and that working out, I believe, builds our faith further, all right? So that's the third point that I would like to share with you, that we need to work out our faith, and that working out will build our faith further. So I'm always in awe with Joshua as a man of accomplishments, always winning, and I naturally overlook the effort and time to build such character. I do think it's not uncommon uh, in a generation where instant gratification is the name of the game. But in preparing this message, I am reminded myself that to grow, it takes time, it takes effort. And by continuously or communing with the Lord, we need to translate that experience into action. And the cycle repeats and we get better and better and better. It does not happen naturally, trust me. I'll, I'll share with you a story in a bit. Uh, it takes deliberate and conscious effort to do so. I don't think it's easy, but I hope and believe that it is worth it. So let me share a story that encapsulates uh, the importance of preparation in order to achieve something. It's a bit lighter, uh, so have a laugh if you want to laugh uh, and you know, be with me. So during my trip to Korea with my wife recently, uh, for work, uh, for work, for me, for work, uh, for my wife, yeah. uh, let, you can ask her later. Uh, so we set out to climb this mountain called Inwangsan Mountain. You can notice that I needed a pause to check the name of the mountain because that's how little I know about the mountain. All right, so I've been working, and then uh, on a Saturday, if I'm not mistaken, uh, my wife said, on Friday night, she asked me, why don't we climb this mountain on Saturday? I said, yeah, sure. So it's about 300 meters high. Oh, the mountain hasn't appeared. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, this is the mountain. So, uh, yeah, this is in Wangsan Mountain. If you can see the black, uh, the grey dot over here, or this block there, that's where we started. And the red colour in the middle there, 338, it says there, that's the peak, all right? So it's about 338 meters high. And uh, we, guess what? We went there to watch the sun set. So it's like super romantic, right? So my wife asked me, I said, yes, let's go. I was not prepared at all, okay? The point of this message is preparation, so remember this, I was not prepared, okay? I can't even remember the last time I climbed a hill 
let alone a mountain, all right? And actually, I wanted to Google what's the difference between a hill and a mountain, so, but I didn't, so anyway. Uh, and I didn't do my research, so I didn't know anything. Literally, the first time I know about the mountain is when I reached at the foot, at the blue, uh, brown color block there, and I was looking at this map. That's the first time I, I knew about the mountain. So anyway, I agreed, and uh, we went up. I was still oblivious that we were, finding, uh, we were climbing this 300-meter mountain. Okay? I have no idea whether it's difficult or easy. And then... Um, we started our journey, and what, what seems like forever, uh, we arrived at the peak. We enjoyed the view, and so the climb, yeah, so this is the, the climb. La. My, that's my wife, uh, that's some random people on the right there, so nobody that I know. All right, so that's like the, you know, the, the inclination and stuff. So we climb, and we reach the peak. This is uh, South Korea, Seoul. So it's like beautiful, right? It's like, wow, yes. After my legs were the putos ready, I arrived at the peak. All right? So I'm like, yes, dear, we made it. You, you know, because you don't prepare, right? So by the time you reach there, you're like, yes. And then you're like, okay, take photos ready, everything, we want to go down, right? So we go down, and I'm like, okay, dear, let's move. And see what I saw next after I moved a couple of steps. I was like, that's not the peak. That's just a mini peak. <laughs> and this is even... I'm like, <laughs> I was like, are you serious? I, I literally am. I'm like, with my wife, you know, thankfully it's just both of us without our kids, like, you know, without our kids, like, get up and But anyway, yeah, so I thought I'd reach the peak, but I didn't. And some of the places are like super steep, ah. And my wife was like, hey, better take photo of this one. So I took photo. All right, so let me go through my notes. Yes. And uh, we continued, we continued, we tried. Oh, we as in I tried, like, my wife is like super fit. So I tried, and halfway, I literally sat at the side of the boulder and said, dear, dear, I cannot already. I don't die already. But then I also think, right, if I were to go back again where I came from, it's also quite a steep climb. So I'm like, are you? Both also cannot make it. I never reached the peak. But I go back, also very difficult to go down because it's very steep. I'm like, alama. Are you? I, I'm bringing, this is just a week or two ago. So it's really real in my memory now, you know. So, but yes, don't ask me how after the service, but we managed to. So we climb. And this, I don't know, this is a false peak. I, I wanted a slide to say this is a false peak. And we climb. Oh. Yeah, so we climb. Uh, this smiling face is very, 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 very photo smiley, okay? I'm not smiling at all during the time. All right, and this is the true peak. I hope, I mean, when I did, I knew like, it's the true peak. Huh? So, and, and you can see quite a lot of people, like, the, the, the mini false peak thing, not many people. Huh? And it's like, uh, only me shots and everything that is the peak. Yeah, so when I was climbing, right? I was also thinking, wow, this experience can be a good story for today's message, lah, right? Never prepare, uh, suka suka never research, and climb a mountain, right? So here I am sharing the message and trying to search for photos to share with you the drama that I had. Okay, so let me share one more, I think one more photo of the sunset. Yeah, I am thankful that I, ca I caught the sunset. <laughs> was barely. So I think you can see the sun nearly... Hilang ready, we were just like, quickly, 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 go away, go away. Take photo. So yeah, so that's how drama it was, uh, climbing just 300 meters high. Um, so I, I wrote in my notes here that for preparation for climbing a mountain, as you guys would be familiar, the standard stuff, you know, you need to eat right, you need to exercise regularly, don't short scenery. I, because I was at Korea for work, I've been not exercising, of course, I've been eating and eating and eating. So, man, was it Monday? Sunday, no, Sunday to... Friday was just eating, work, eat, work, eat, work, sleep. Lah, yeah. And then on Saturday, I climbed a mountain. Clearly, recipe for Peng San. <laughs> I, trust me, like, I, we, we needed to stop and then we see other people walk past us, you know. I was like, wow, these guys are huh? power. Eh. We were just, and then Shirley, and my wife Shirley was like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Like, wait, 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 cannot, cannot, cannot yet. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> so that's how my mountain climbing was. So, enough about me. Uh, coming back to Joshua. Let's have a look at what the preparation he has had yielded its fruits. Okay, we're going to read a familiar story of scouting the promised land that demonstrated his faith very, very clearly. Let's turn to the book of Numbers, chapter 14, if I'm mistaken. Yes, a bit of context. Um, the Israelites arrived at Kadesh Barnea, just nearby uh, the promised land. So uh, from there, the Lord commanded Moses to well, send out the 12 men, explore the land of Canaan, and that... Um, the ten men came back, describing the land as flowing with milk and honey, but, a very big but, uh, they said that the people who lived there were powerful 
and the cities were fortified. So here we read, we read what Joshua and Caleb did when they, uh, they heard, when they heard uh, what the ten men said. So Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes. Just, just uh, occurred to me, tearing your clothes, I mean now maybe we have more clothes, that, right? But last time, not many clothes, right? And you actually tear their clothes, right? And uh, said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, He will lead us into the land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. How powerful is that? And I underline the word, the Lord is with us. And the, the phrase, sorry, the, I underline the phrase, the Lord is with us. And, and, and anything that um, come to mind when we say the Lord is with us? Ring any bells? No? Yes? Any bells? No? No. Hmm, so sad. Emmanuel, God is with us. Right? Emmanuel. So I, I, I took... The, the, the verse from uh, Matthew, uh, where the angel spoke to Joseph in a dream, uh, referencing to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 7. The angel spoke to Joseph about Jesus, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you, you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet Isaiah. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So this word Emmanuel, when I was a younger Christian, is very intriguing. Uh, I always took comfort that knowing just the phrase, you know, God is with us. When I was younger, I always took comfort, God is with us. But not until I listened to David Pawson's Unlocking the Bible series that I understood the fullness of the word. So now, again, uh, I need you to get your phones out and scan the same QR code. If you're on the same page, like just now, it's fine. It should be uh, working. Uh, wait, now, let me just go to the next page. Don't do anything yet. Oh, no, it's not working now. Let me go to the next page. Uh, yes, all right, here, here we go. So if you can see on your phones, if you scan a QR code on the right, you see on your phone, um, or just now the website, it's the same website, it should, uh, it should be updated to this page, or at least which one would you want to choose? Okay, so don't choose yet. Don't choose yet. Let me explain to you first. Um, which of these four ways of God is with us do you think the word Emmanuel carries? Okay, let me read. Huh? Is it the first one? God is with us, or is it God is with us, or is it God is with us? Very fine line, right? He's like, what is this guy trying to do? So one sentence, so many complicated, man. So, but yes. Lo and behold, I mean, I was listening to David Pawson and he was explaining this for, and I was like, wow. So yeah, ooh, I saw some blobs falling down. Nice, nice. So choose. Ah. All right, go for it, go for it. That's yeah, very encouraging. 181, bubble, bubble up. Okay, I'm glad that this works too. Wow. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think we can stop at 300 if we reach 300. I'm okay. Wow. <laughs> now, yeah, now the church is making me doubt, but I, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure I, read, I heard David Pawson correctly, but yeah, let's see. Okay. <laughs> okay. For the 22 of you guys, or 23 of you guys, well done. Perhaps you have heard <laughs> David Pawson. But yes. Emmanuel means God is with us, not with them. <laughs> yay, I hear some yay here. <laughs> yes, that's what he means, the word. And, and imagine the profound, the, 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 you know, if you, if you think God is with us, God is with you and me, how would that change how we view things? Right? You have God behind you, God is with us, not with them. So, so, so I, just wanna, I just want everybody to, you know, catch that. Because I did when David Poston was like, I literally paused this video and I just stood there and I stopped there and think, wow, what does this mean? 
Okay? Um, where am I on my notes? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so I just want to recap that, you know, knowing this, God is with us, these 28 people, the rest, this 100 over 92, all please, uh, next time I do, uh, uh, we, we do this, we go to the, God is with us, huh? all right? Um, yeah, we, we read just now in Numbers 14, uh, it says, do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us, us, right? Do not be afraid of them. So with all the preparation comes the commissioning of Joshua, found in Deuteronomy 31, um, where we hear what Moses said. Oh, no. Oh, it's done, right? Yep. You have reached the end of your presentation. No, not yet. All right, here. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, Deuteronomy 31. Hear what Moses said in commissioning Joshua. So after all the preparation, before Joshua going and whack the people, here's the commissioning. All right. It's a bit long, bear with me. Uh, I did consider to snip it or uh, shorten it, like, you know, just a passage, but I was thinking, yeah, a bit, a bit of length to give us a context. So Moses went out and spoke those words to all Israel. Read with me if you want. I'm now 120 years old and I'm no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you will take possession of their land. Joshua also will cross over ahead of you, as the Lord said. And the Lord will do to them what he did to Sihon and all the kings of the Amorites, whom he destroyed along with their land. The Lord will deliver them to you, and you must do to them all that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And then now with Joshua. Then, then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them, and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So, this passage is long, but I think it's... It lit I mean, I also wonder, right? How many times this Joshua needs to be reminded, right, from God? And da, da, da. But, you know, the, the encouragement that comes from people, you know, the Moseses in our lives, it matters. And it matters a lot. So I, I hope that sticks with us. So after the commissioning of Joshua, Moses passed on and Joshua led the Israelites to conquer the promised land. That we all heard, we all heard earlier just now. I hope I managed to paint sort of a mental picture uh, here here on site as well as online. Um, how how the formative years of Joshua from having the privilege to be by Moses' side, seeing God speak to Moses face to face like a friend just now, experiencing God day in and day out, and battling for the Lord with the Amalekites that we saw just now as well. All right. So so and he didn't waver at all. And how looking at Joshua was prepared and thus lived such a godly life, you know, all the way conquering the land and dividing it and, uh, to the end of his life. The question then beckons us, how do we raise more Joshua in our midst, right? How? And may I suggest that a key to, that res uh, to, the, to the raising of Joshua lies in the question that I posed earlier. How real is God in our lives? That's the starting question. How real is God in our lives? For Moses, God is as real as it gets, leading the Israelites across the Red Sea, speaking to God on various occasions, receiving Ten Commandments, so on and so forth, so many occasions. Joshua, as Moses said, he saw God since young next to, next to Moses, firsthand and exercising in battle as well. So how about us? Is God real in the selection of what we watch on Netflix, on YouTube, on TikTok? Is God real in how we spend our time? Whether to wake up, prepare, come to church on Sunday, or just wake up two minutes before 9.30, click the button and on. Just want to pause there and let, let this question, how real is God in our lives? Just sink in and see how we can change. Just a small change in our lives would do for now. And then as we grow, we grow. It takes time to grow. And I, I also wrote here in my notes, Closer to home now, here in service. 
Do we dedicate our attention to listening to this? Instagram notifications, or replying to our friends, WhatsApp texts. I'm not saying that I don't do this. I'm guilty of it as well, but I'm just sharing as congregation. How do we, how do we know? How real is God in our lives? And don't, please don't, please, please don't uh, tell your neighbor next to you after that, you know, it'll be different drama after that. So now, uh, I have a small testimony that encapsulates the lessons that we have learned, or we have heard today. Um, we have heard just now how it takes time, effort, and action as we prepare ourselves to live for the Lord. And it, con- it is a continuous thing. It's not a once-off event, you know. So I did the same three things to prepare for today. You know, I started preparing uh, today's sermon a couple of months back in terms of reading the book of Joshua again and again, having the book of Joshua read to me uh, again and again using the Bible app. Uh, and I was writing things down, uh, taking notes, what strikes me. And in recent weeks, I pieced things together from my notes. And today it drew nearer I actually got pretty nervous uh, saying just now uh, whether I'm really up to the task, right? And uh, like I mentioned earlier, studying Joshua's character really helped. So just last Friday, just two days ago, I was thinking of skipping my cell group. Uh, I'll just sort of sharing. Uh, we were part, I'm part of an uh, uh, anchor cell group now. I, th- I thought of skipping cell group just to make sure that you know, I got a hang of the message, right? But somehow I was nudged. Not by anybody. I was just like, mm, maybe it's not right. I even texted my uh, working com, you know, guys, I might not be able to join you guys tonight, but... In the end, I, I, I mean, I, I appeared, and everyone was like, hey, DJ is here. Yeah, so, um, yeah. And I don't know why, when I obeyed, in the Bible study, we did the character of Deborah, led by our member, Wen Lin. I think Wen Lin's birthday is today as well, right, Wen Lin? Yeah. So, yeah, Wen Lin, who, yeah, if you are tuning in online, happy birthday. So, yeah, our member, Wen Lin, led the Bible study, and read how, how God delivered the enemy into the hands of Deborah and Barak. Barak was told to fight the general Sisera, who is so much more powerful than Barak's army, but the Lord delivered them. And, and, and to me, I can't be more encouraged by the timely word of God that spoke to me, you know, to continue trusting that His will be done, regardless of how inadequate I feel. And so here I am, practicing my action part of my faith, right? Standing before you and delivering the message. So to recap, the three things that I've been saying, that it takes time, effort, communing with God, and exercising our faith. We need also encouragement. The Lord even reminded Moses to encourage Joshua in Deuteronomy, 20, uh, Deuteronomy 1. Uh, you have down there, but I don't have the text. Um, where he said to Moses, encourage him, there's Joshua, because he will lead Israel into inheriting the promised land. And where do we get this encouragement? Where do we get this encouragement? In the community of believers. You can't walk this journey alone. For those of us here who are on here and who are online as well, that you are not connected to a community, please, please, please do get connected. You can see how my community is very loud, right, over there? Yeah, so hopefully, you know, we get our community and we, we encourage one another. And uh, yeah, there are QR codes at the end of the service, so please get connected. And for my climb to In Wang Son uh, Mountain, and yeah, my wife, my encourager, can one, no problem one, can one, although I'm going to die already, but can one. So in the end, we made it, yeah. And this photo is quite drama as well. Okay, so for the Moseses among us, the ones that have walked the journey before us, ahead of us, please mentor us, the younger ones, who have yet to experience our parting of the Jordan. Walk with us, spend time with us, encourage us as we try and serve the Lord. As we go into battle, raise up your hands for us. And for the Joshua's among us, I think there are a lot of Joshua's here, um, please, you know what to do, huh? If you don't know what to do, means I've spent like, what, 25 minutes? La, 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 la. So you know what to do. If you don't know what to do, go YouTube and replay back, okay? So Joshua, you know what to do. So allow me to close by reassuring every one of us here, me included, and those online, uh, with the same words that the Lord said to Joshua before he crossed the Jordan River in chapter 1. May I invite you to close your eyes um, as I read these words to you. Experience it as the Lord is speaking to you. So here we go with every eyes closed. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to your ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. 
Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. Amen and amen. Yeah, as I, as I have the worship theme up, uh, I would like to encourage everyone with the lyrics of this song that we're going to sing next. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain moved. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear, for I'm safe with you. God bless you, dearest FGA. Can we just rise? Let's just respond. Uh, thank you for such an encouraging message this morning. We want to sing this song. It's called Battle Belongs. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see the mountain. And as I walk through the shadows, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear for I am safe with you. So when I find I find on my knees with my hands lifted high, oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. And when I put you on the ashes, you see the beauty. All I see is the cross, God. You see the empty tomb.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, the battle belongs to you, Lord. We thank you for reminding us, God, you are with us. Holy Spirit, you live in us. Lord, we thank you for reminding us this morning, Lord. First of all, Lord, to raise up the Joshua's in thy church here, FGA. And to mentor them, Father, just as, Lord, you let Moses to mentor the Joshua among us, that, God, they will lead thy people to cross the Jordan, Father, as we cross the 40 years, Father, into the new 40 years, of oh God, into the promised future of FGA, the M100 mandate they have given to us. God, fill us afresh and new this day, Lord, that God, thy children here in FGA, Father, shall be filled with thy Holy Spirit, full of thy mercy and grace. And Lord, going forward with strength and courage, that God, you give us the bonus and the courage to move forward in thy name because thy presence is with us thank you lord and lord now bless thy children here and at home father who have heard the message this morning that god we have received thy word father with thanksgiving our heart setting ourselves apart to seek thy kingdom and thy righteousness first trusting you with all our hearts and lean not on our own understanding that in all our ways of god we acknowledge you and give you thanks lord so lord bless us keep us make thy face shine upon us be gracious to us turn to us and grant us thy peace as we go forth in thy name lord in jesus name amen amen god bless you thank you for coming those are online, welcome back home to join us physically here. Thank you, thank you, God bless.